To everyone who watched the first two episodes of Communism in Cuba, thank you. The first two episodes were the Miami episodes. Those are the prequel basically to the rest of the series that was actually filmed in Cuba. Right now though, I'm gonna release a couple videos that we filmed in Havana, in our Airbnb. This video and then the next videos like this were all filmed on the same night. It was me and Carlos and then Will and Jacob who sat down to have these discussions. Will and Jacob were acting as my cameraman for this documentary. This was purely just to give insight on what we had been experiencing. We shot this during the middle of our stay in Cuba. So this was like the midway point. Just to put some context into these videos, uh, we filmed them, like I said, in our Airbnb. We were definitely getting monitored. And so the stuff we were saying actually could have had a lot of negative repercussions on us and our ability to leave the country. The stuff that we were talking about were real issues that we experienced and that people that we talked to experienced. This wasn't us making uh, anything up. The day before we filmed this, we met a girl that we called Rihanna because she looked like Rihanna the singer. She was a prostitute and she worked along the Malecon, which is basically the boardwalk of Cuba. I'm not gonna say Rihanna's real name, I don't even think we filmed her just to protect her safety. But we joke about her a lot in these videos and in this video in particular. I left all of our jokes in there just because the absurdity of the whole thing was legitimate. I mean, with that, this is how we really felt at the time. What we later learned was that Rihanna was 17 years old and she had been working as a prostitute for three to four years. So she started when she was 13, 14 years old, working the Mali gone and, and picking up guys and stuff like that. And she had to because her family could not survive off of the stipend that the government gave them every month. The day after we filmed this, I sat down and I talked with her about what it was like to be a prostitute. And this is a normal, regular girl. I know sometimes we kind of classify you know, sex workers from regular workers, you know, I even do it in this video. I refer to her as not being a normal girl, but she actually is just a normal girl. She basically willingly got raped hundreds and hundreds of times by tourists just so that she and her family could eat. That is the reality of the whole situation there in Cuba. And it's not just her, there's many, many girls like her who are underage, who are working because they have to work. We do joke a lot about her in this video especially. She was such a nice person, she was so kind, she was, she was willing to talk to us about things that most Cubans probably wouldn't have because of the fear of the government. She told us especially that her goal was to meet a foreign man and have him marry her so that she could leave Havana. That's how bad it is for her in Havana. She doesn't want to keep doing these things and she doesn't want to keep living there because the situation is so bad. We all are relatively moderate. We're not for or against any political ideology. We respect all political viewpoints. But for the most part, all the people in this video were and are against communism. That being said though, we still find the legitimacy in respecting other people's viewpoints. There's always gonna be respect there. It's just that when people force other people to have their political viewpoints, that's where me and the rest of the guys have a problem. Thank you so much to the guys for taking the time after our long day of filming to sit down with me and talk through questions I had for you guys and just being the best overall team I could have had going through Cuba. He has the camera, right? Yeah. So it's like, look, these guys brought this guy off the street and now all these things are missing. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's fucking no scary. No matter what happens, mm -hmm. not saying it's going to, but if something does happen with the girl, you shouldn't bring them here. Oh no. Oh, I know. No, 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 I know. I you mean, know, I'm not know. saying that you wouldn't. Yeah. But like, yeah. yeah, you're not saying we're, we're attractive enough to yeah, pay them exactly. girls. That's 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 like, like Rihanna said, I'll take you to a nice room. That's what you do. You go Ex to, no. room, to the apartment. You don't shit when you sleep. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I kind of do. <laughs> I do. You do. Yeah, you do. Have you seen my room? I want to put like as many different angles as this thing as I can, you know? So now it's, it's just not one viewpoint. You caught me so off guard yesterday with those prostitutes. Because it was a great conversation. Like we were having a great conversation. I was listening and I was like, oh wow, this is interesting. And then I just hear Rihanna, she was like, so you want to come to a room with me? I was like, 
wait a minute, I thought we were having a civil. Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait, wait yeah. you, you did not just say that. But, but wait, wait, like, no, not you too. We confirm <laughs> that she does look like Rihanna, right? Like she actually looks like Rihanna. Yo, you know what's crazy? Like. She kept talking about sex, right? And like, I literally thought that she was a normal person. I'm like, wow, she's really upfront with this conversation. <laughs> like, I wanted to ask this to Carlos earlier because I noticed it, like it just came to me. Like there's, there's no homeless people here. Like there's no homeless people. Supposedly. Supposedly. Right. But of course you see a lot of people out on the street just hanging out, not doing anything. And I mean like Daniel gave us that insight whenever yesterday. And he said like he can make more money taking tourists around than he can actually like working a job. I wanted to ask you guys, do you think people here would rather be homeless in a place like the United States, not the United States, but in a, a structure similar to the United States or live free rent here in Havana? Like which, which side do you think they would be on? I mean no disrespect, but I think it's a hard and a stupid question try to answer because there's so many possible ways in which people will react to that uh, there's obviously people who will tell you oh fuck yeah for this country I would rather be a fucking homeless person in fucking California even though homeless people in California have it really bad at the same time you you will get answers like fuck no I love Cuba and no matter how bad uh, politicians or the dictatorship has ruined it I'm gonna stay here because this is what I have, and I'm not gonna risk what little I have for something that I, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to achieve. You can't put yourself in their shoes, like it's impossible. Yes. So, if it were up to you. There you go. You are born in Havana. Mm -hmm. Would you rather stay here and live rent free and basically have a paycheck? Like you're guaranteed a paycheck. No matter what, you're always guaranteed a paycheck. You're guaranteed free education, free healthcare. Or, you're not guaranteed any of that, but you have the potential to achieve something better than that, but you also have the potential to be homeless. Like, what I'm trying to get at is, would you rather live here and have those benefits or be homeless in the United States? If I were to give you an answer based on my actual experience as, as on the conditions under I have lived with, fuck yeah, I would rather be homeless in the US than uh, half paid rent and free healthcare here in Cuba. Right, so I mean like your first instinct when I asked that question, like just going pure off emotion. I said, no, <laughs> fuck no. So you would be homeless in the US? Yes, but that's not a fair answer. No, I know, I know. Rihanna, right, who we met, not the actual Rihanna. Even though she was born in Cuba, mm -hmm. she, knew, she knew a lot about America mm -hmm. and she could just speak English. Like, her English was really good. So it's clear that she's already on game about America. You actually know of America, right? Then at that point, if you know like the possibilities that you could do in America, then of course, I'm going to America even if I have to be homeless because at least you have a shot there and you can be something and there's not a government that is putting you under a limitation of like, this is what you're gonna do, this is when you're gonna do it. It don't, it don't matter how much you do it, you're still gonna get paid the same. You don't have just like, you know, not even like a, a little bit of what we have in the States. If you asked me that question, and I was up on game about America, like Rihanna, the prostitute. That's such a <laughs> title for a book. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna the prostitute. <laughs> Rihanna the prostitute, an autobiography. <laughs> but if I'm on a game one. like that, then of course, because I already know, I already know what's waiting for me, like across, you know, that water. Even though I don't really know all all about America, because I'm sure there's some things that she doesn't know. But still, ultimately, you know, in America, it's it's the land of opportunity, as you know, we always say. So just with knowing that. You can do something that, you know, like hundreds of years of your bloodline has never done. Uh, I do agree with Will there, but at the same time, I think that like if we really wanted to get to the root of all of this, we will have to take multiple variables into account because it's not just about wanting uh, a certain amount of freedom to, to do whatever you want or to actually have uh, a chance at achieving something. 
you have to take into account things such as uh, race, age, gender, True. Uh, religious beliefs. Because you might know about all these opportunities that you might get in America, mm -hmm. but what if you are a 60, 55 year old lady who knows that she's not gonna have the same opportunities in America because she's already old. And oh, she, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Now, yeah. there could also be the case in which um, you have such profound religious or political beliefs that even if you know that things are really bad here in Cuba and that and you know that you can do better in, in America, you're not gonna do it because honor or uh, patriotism is so important to you that no matter if you have it so bad here, you're not going, you're not going to betray your country. So all those kinds of things mm. need to be uh, taken into account. 